Good morning, church. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank the Reverend Ministers, um, Katkis, and then all presbyters, and then the leaders of YPG, as well as the Committee of Youth and Students Week. Um, for the theme I'm speaking on, it has already been um, a part of it had been discussed in the first on the first day, so. I am here to take another dimension of it um, uh, by their president. He says I should take um, being an example as a believer in this perverse generation. So we'll pick um, our scripture first from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Um, please, I like in James Version, please. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in the world, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Please, let's pray. Blessed Father, we give you praise, we give you glory for this day. Uh, we ask that by your spirit, you let your word come forth to bring renewal of mind, quickening of spirit, and transformation that we may live a life worthy of this calling, even in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, Paul is asking that we should be an example. Twelve, please. We should be an example, not to the world, not to the perverse generation, as we have been taught by um, our Reverend Minister Ashite but we should be an example of the believers. This is a higher calling. And why is Paul asking us to be examples to the believers and not to the world? Because if we read um, 1 John the chapter 3, the verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. John says that, Behold, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. He says, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. So if the world do not know us, how then can we be an example to them? Because we have been called and transformed into a certain level in, in humanity that the world cannot make sense of. So our call to be an example is not to this perverse generation, it's not to them who have not accepted Christ, but to the believers because we are in the rank of God. Jesus said, have I not called you gods? So we have been called into a place of Godhood. Not that we are God by ourselves originally. All things we are in Christ Jesus, from righteousness to holiness to purity, all that we have is, is, is actually from Christ. We are not originals by ourselves. We are from somewhere. Our source is from somewhere. And that is Christ. That is why the call of the believer is not to be an example to this world, but to the people of God. This is why John said that he came to his own, but his own received him not. But as, them, as many as received them, even unto them that believed on his name, he gave them power to become the sons of God. He said, these are born not of blood, nor of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, but they are born of God. If you are here, probably you think you are born of blood because all you see is family members. You think you are born of the will of man because even in the then world, John, in 1 John chapter 1, 11 downwards, John knew that even in this world by the Holy Ghost, there will be a time where man shall be able to have a will to give birth. Man shall say, I want twins, and science can get that done. Man can say, I want a, a male, I want a female, and science can get that done. But John is saying that this group of people, they are not even born of the will of man. Man did not, did not come forth with their own intentions to bring them out from their mother's womb. John is saying this call of God is the will of God. God, John, according to Paul in um, Ephesians the chapter 1, verse 3 down, he said, blessed be to God of our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as he chose us, according to he chose us. This is the chosen before the world was even formed. And Jesus, by 
when he came to the world and the people did not receive him, the Israelites rejected him. He said, even them who received and them that believed on his name, we are the people who believed on his name. And so our call is not to be examples to the fellow man or woman in the world, but the people of God. And as a youth, this is the call of Paul to Timothy. The same way a father called his son is the way the father is calling you today. That your example must be not, on, not to the world, not to the people who have not believed in Jesus, but to the fellow believer. And this is a high calling. Amen. So we go back to First Timothy, the chapter 4, the verse 12. Now Paul speaks of areas that as a believer you ought to be an example. And first of all, he says in word. The first one is in word. What are the words that you speak? Have you not read that life and death lies in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof? What are the words you speak? What are the words you hear concerning yourself? Just because you were not good in math, your master told you you are good for nothing, and you have kept that in mind. The entire world doesn't revolve on math. The entire world doesn't revolve on science. These are theories and theologies of earthly nature. In the day to come, where we shall meet our Savior, these things will not matter, except the word of God, that very doctrine and theories from heaven above. Jesus said, you are of the earth, but I am the Lord from heaven. He came to bring a word unto us. Henceforth, he says in Joel, that when you see, when, when, when you wake up, beat your, 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 your uh, metals into weapons and say though i am weak yet i am strong these are the kind of words we speak words from above heavenly words words anointed and, uh, and uh, authenticated by god himself henceforth you cannot hold on to the words of that which a teacher had said or of that which your mom had said Maybe your mom has spoken words, ill words, because you acted in a certain way. But, oh, I, I, I listened to Pastor Mensa Otabel. He says, we are not human behaviors. We are human beings. It is the nature. The behavior doesn't define the person. It is that call, that very being of yours. And those words, when, when you look into scriptures, what do you see? You see heavenly words, words of hope, words of life, written concern you as a believer. Let no man despise your youth. Hold on to the words God has spoken concerning you. Open the living word. Let the word enter into you. Be, hold on to the word. Don't go by the words of men. Now on social media, there is everything. Men are saying all kinds of jokes. But as a believer, you must separate yourself. You must know jokes that are worthy to say. You might know jokes that are unworthy to say because you have been called with a holy calling. Whether you like it or yes, you have been called with a holy calling. One of the favorite scriptures when you go to children's service is Proverbs um, 22, the verse 6. Proverbs 22, the verse 6. I want us to do a little Hebrew here. The word train up a child in the way that it should go. If you want to anglicize from the Hebrew, this is what it says. It says, catechism, which is the same as train, up a child in the way, what it says it should go, is the, way, is the word mouth. The word go is the word mouth. The Hebrew word translated go is the word mouth. So this is what he's saying. He says, catechism is a child in the way of his mouth, so that when he grows, he will not depart from it. You must, you must train a child in the words that he speaks. That word must, must be redefined by the things of God. That word must be redefined by the Holy Ghost. That word, according to James, he says the, the entire body is handled by the lip, by, by the tongue. It is that which produces the words. And John, and, and here the wise man is saying that catechist your child in the way of his mouth. Maybe you were not catechist in the way of your mouth because you grew like where I grew up, where insults are for jokes, where we say things about our parents, about ourselves, and it doesn't matter. But I came to remind you that it is written, catechist your, 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 yourself in the way of your mouth. And when you grow, you shall not depart from those words. Those are words of life. I am blessed. I am called of God. I am anointed of God. Whatever I touch is blessed. I cannot be sick. These are the words that God is calling us to let it flow from our, our mouth and it shall be unto us a fruit even in the future to come in the name of the Lord Jesus. According to Colossians, the chapter 4, the verse 6, Paul says that 
let your speech be always filled with grace and be seasoned with salt that you may know how to answer every man this is the call a call of words we speak words of life we speak words of hope david said i i beseech you my god accept the free will offering of my lips you can't bring offering here and speak ill of yourself it won't work you can't bring tight and speak ill of the tight that i mean you i mean i get i get your tight eh? i get you know what you can't say such words and see the beauty of tithing bible is calling you to speak words let it be full of grace and be seasoned with salt in the name of the lord jesus and let's go back to first timothy the chapter 4 the verse 12. sorry if i'm fast i have less time um he says that not only in words but in conversation if you check the niv he says speech which is word and then it says in conduct which the king james call conversation i want us to open to um philippians chapter 3 from the verse 17 to 21 philippians chapter 3. now paul is saying he say Join with others in following my example. No, I want King James, please. I don't want an IV. Thank you. Brethren, be, fellow, be followers together with me and mark them which walk as ye have us for an example. He said, For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the, he said, well, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose god is their belly whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things question do you fall under any but paul says in the next one he says for our conversation is in heaven from whence we look for the savior our lord jesus christ this word no please go back thank you this word conversation here in the NIV, you see the word citizen. If we want to anglicize that Greek word, please just keep, just keep King James. I'll, I'll make reference to NIV. Just keep King James. Thank you. This word conversation, when we anglicize the Hebrew, no, the Greek word, it means the administration of our civil affair and commonwealth. That is to say, all that we do as civil servants, all that we do as citizens, all that we do in any, any, anywhere you find yourself, in Ghana, you are a Ghanaian. Whether you are working for the private, whether you are working for even an, um, uh, uh, um, an international company, you are still a Ghanaian. This is what he's saying, that our conversation, our administration of civil affairs and commonwealth is heavenly. Thank God for the 1992 constitution, but there is a heavenly one. There is one program from above for men and for men who have believed in christ jesus and this one which is from above how you ought to conduct yourself how you ought to maneuver yourself in this perverse generation and even among the brethren paul is saying that ours is from above if yours is not from above all the life you will live is the verse 19 you, 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 you will have nothing for the cross of Christ. It will mean nothing to you. All that you will think is your belly. <laughs> you will waste away all the glories of God bestowed upon you, even by believing in Jesus. But if you hold on to this word of life from above, how we ought to conduct ourselves. Verse 20, please. For our administration and civil affairs, and commonwealth is from heaven he says from whence we look for the savior the lord jesus christ so in order to be able to live that life in order to walk according to the constitution of heaven you must do one thing look unto the savior not your boyfriend from Volta. i mean the savior savior from above amen you must look unto that savior jesus christ and he says he has, he has an ability to do something. That's in verse 21. 
He says, who shall change our vile body that it might be fashioned unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. This is what it means. The word change here is not the word metamorpho. The, the Greek as we see in um, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 where Paul says that for the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. We all with an unveiled face, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are metamorphosed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Lord's Spirit. That word, change, is the word metamorpho in 2 Corinthians. But in Philippians, Paul didn't use that word metamorpho because that word represents a change from within. But this one is talking about a change outward. That thing we call the flesh, that men say it wrestles with the spirit, according to Paul's words. This particular one is the change that Jesus is bringing. It's the word metaschematizomai, which means there is an outward transformation that even the vile body will waste away. The word vile means that that body is subject to sin. It is a weakling when it comes to sin. When it meets sin face to face, it is unable to overcome sin. But when you look unto the Savior, oh, our Lord Jesus Christ, when our conversation comes, where our heavenly administration comes, he, Jesus, shall be able to put this body of sin to death. Because one time ago, he nailed it on the cross and he screamed that it is finished. He is able to change that vile body that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body. He has all the powers to do so. Maybe you might have fallen or you think you are weak in a certain area. I came to announce to you that one time Paul cried out in Romans 7 and he said, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? And he said, but thanks be to God, who by Jesus he brought deliverance. Henceforth we can say, according to Romans 8 verse 1, therefore there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, but God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the body that the righteousness of God, ah, that we might, that righteousness, we might be partakers of that righteousness. That we all might be partakers of that righteousness. I like what Peter said. Peter said that we have been called to enjoy that heavenly life that we might escape the corruption that is, in, that is in this world through lust. And lust operates with the flesh. But I came to announce to you one time ago, one man, his name Jesus, nailed that ability on the cross. And he's able to subdue all things unto himself. He will subdue it unto himself. All that you leave is God. Your words will be God. Your conduct outward will be God. And, and when believers see you, they see God. They, they, they see the fragrance of God all around you. Amen. So, 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, the next thing he talks about is the, word, is the area called spirit. In the NIV, you will not see the spirit. NIV talks about the word, conversation, the um, speech, character. Talks, then it talks about love and then but I won't talk about the spirit. I will not have time for charity, faith, and purity. No, let me take the purity. Impurity. Let me take it from behind. Impurity. Impurity, we want to turn our Bibles to 1 John, the chapter 3 and the verse 2. We have read one already. 1 John, the chapter 3, the verse 2. This is what it says. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear unto us what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Any man who has the end of our faith in mind always purifies himself. This time we have, we have been filled more with uh, it's difficult to say it, but let me say it. I receive it, I receive it. Amen. You see, we have been so much filled with the things of 
of, of the world that we are, we are not more occupied by the coming of our, our beloved. No more. Hardly do I hear preaching on the coming of our Savior, Jesus. But one time I read a story about a great evangelist. He said he was on his way after he had ministered. And he saw a woman weeping by the road. And he walked to her. He said, why are you weeping? And the woman said, that his beloved, her beloved, has started more than he promised her. He said, who is that beloved? The woman said, Jesus. There was tears in her eyes. Her whole desire was God. Such a person, you see, as young ones who are not married, when your baby says she's coming to visit, oh man, that is when you realize that you are more than Zoom Lion. You want to clean everything. Yeah, you want to look good. Yeah, so there is a purification of the home just because one baby says she will come. But the heavenly baby, have you thought of him? Oh. When was the last time you, lie, you laid on your bed and you thought of heaven? When was the last time you thought of the coming of your Savior? You lost a child. And all you think about is that lost child. You lost a friend. And all you think about is that lost friend. And you think that the future was all around that person. Someone broke your heart and all you think about is that person. I came to announce to you there is a thinking you ought to do. It is the thought of his coming. Paul said, if anyone loveth not the Lord Jesus, let him be anathema. Then he said, Maranatha. The word anathema is that an animal set for destruction. That is those who have not believed in Jesus. And then he concluded by saying, Maranatha, Jesus, come. Behold, I show you a mystery. First Corinthians, the chapter 15, the verse 51 downwards. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality. So then when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying which is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death is sin, but the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Who has given us victory? That word, it, it, the, the, the King James says, giveth, is present continuous. Every day we walk in that victory. Every day we walk in that victory. And this morning, I came to remind you of your Savior. Maybe it's been a while you heard of him. <laughs> All you have heard is a new car and a new job. All you have heard is marriage and a child. All you have heard for a while is things about this earth. Testimonies are full of earthly things nowadays. We have nothing God. And we are seeking for his presence and power. You want to rise up on your feet. This day you want to remind yourself of your savior. Maybe also you might have fallen. And so you are lying down. It is pride to stay in your sin. Because one time I saw the Hebrew writer write. The Hebrew prophet write. Artis makiv o yaftani, kina farti kamti, ki e shev bakoshe adonai oli. In English it means, Rejoice not against me, O my enemies. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. You want to call on that Lord who is a light mm -hmm. unto you? Maybe you might have fallen, maybe you might have. Filled your heart with something you are yearning for. Maybe for a child. Maybe you are occupied with the things that you need right now. But if he gave you Jesus, there is nothing he cannot give you. You want to talk to God. There is no one greater than Jesus. The child you are seeking for is no greater than Jesus. The job you are seeking for is no greater than Jesus. You want to talk to God. You want to close your eyes and talk to God. Whatever you are seeking is not greater than Jesus. But I came to present to you that living word. You want to talk to God. That God, I don't want to be occupied with the things of this world. I want to be occupied with you, Jesus. 
I want to be occupied with you, Jesus. David said, go round about Zion. Go walk about her. Consider her palaces that ye may tell it to the generation following that this God is our God forever and ever. You want to go about Zion, you want to think about Zion, that heavenly home we have been called into. And you want to say, God, I let it all go. And I look unto you, with you I have all things. With you I have all things. With you I have all things. Psalm 23 says, He set a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Whenever you see the finger of the enemy, know that a table is set. Don't look onto the enemy, look onto the table. When there is barrenness, don't look elsewhere. You see the enemy going around. Look, there is Samuel. <laughs> Noro has said, that is the table, Samuel. When you see barrenness going all around, don't be worried. Look, there is John the Baptist. <laughs> when you see barrenness all around, don't look elsewhere. Behold, there is, Ish there, 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 there is uh, Joseph around. There is Joseph around. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for your word. We thank you that daily we are transformed by this word. We thank you that you have put in our hearts to treasure this word. We thank you that forever we shall long for this word and always be with the word, even by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. In whom do you believe in? Come very much to see you.